Hi guys, um, I'm out looking for brown hares tonight and this is the first time I've been out since uh, you know the restrictions um, were first brought in place. So I'm super excited just to be out in the nature, just in the environment and the light is fantastic. I've already seen a couple of brown hares over in that field. So what I'm gonna try and do is get right down the edge and tuck myself down low and hopefully, uh, you know, once uh, I'm in place and I'm down low, I won't disturb them and uh, we'll see what we can get. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so pleased to be out. Um, I've got my 200 to 500 zoom lens with me because I'm going to do a bit of walking so I don't want to lug the 600 around. Um, I'm on ISO 400 because we've still got a lot of light although it's late in the evening now. It's probably around, I don't know, about um, half seven, quarter to eight but I've still got probably at least another hour's light so it's brilliant. Uh, I've seen a barn owl as well uh, over on a field that way so I mean, you know, it would be super lucky if I get hares and a barn owl in the same night. Um, unlikely but you know you never know um so yeah what i'm going to do is walk down there tuck myself in on the edge of the field and then just wait and see if i can spot any bar uh, any uh, brown hairs it's no point in trying to you know chase them or look for them I in the end it's the best thing is to just find a little spot in a place where you know their hairs and i know their brown hairs in that field and then just wait and that's what i'm going to do um i'm on uh, as i say iso 400 um a 800 of a second um, and f uh, 6.3 because there's a reasonable amount of light around and uh, I'll be probably at 500 mil. Uh, I've got my gimbal head with me so that I've got plenty of movement so I can pan and tilt and track if they start running and if I don't get any tonight then I'm going to be back because this is a great spot in the Essex countryside for brown hares so it's just a case of it's the same as any wildlife and brown hares in particular I think you just have to be patient and uh, just wait for them to come to you and that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to walk down here now and uh, see what I can uh, see what we can find fingers crossed but it's just great to be out after being stuck inside or stuck you know with our one walk a day for so long we can now get out a bit more and I'm so so enjoying this so um, I'll speak to you soon guys super excited um, I've got two or three uh, brown hair shots and uh, I've got them from uh, a little bit high up to be honest I'd rather have been down low but the brown hair was there and I got it and I haven't got any further because I looked round at the field behind me and there was a backlit barn owl so I've got some backlit barn owl shots now it was quite distant so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to crop in a little bit but it was fantastic so I'm in a bit of a dilemma really, dilemma really. I don't know whether to go that way and wait for the barn owls to come back up again because I know they're there or go that way and go for the brown hairs. I mean, it's not often you get a choice like this. What do I do, brown hairs or barn elves? They're both fantastic subjects. Now, I've actually got a few pictures of both of them. Now, I wouldn't say they're brilliant, they're just okay. And I could just see a little monk jack deer, three monk jack deers in the background. So the evenings are just fantastic. And I would say, if you're gonna do wildlife photography, you wanna be out either early morning or in the evening, because that's when the wildlife comes out. And you know, it's either get up early, especially this time of year, it's um, late May, so it's a really early start, or, or come out late. So um, yeah, I'm having a fantastic evening. I'm, I've not got shots that, you know, I'm gonna go, well, they're the best ever, but I've got shots of barn owls and I've got shots of brown hair. And uh, I will certainly be putting in a bit of time here. And uh, I think I'm probably gonna have to make a decision the next time I'm here, one or the other. And it's a, a tough one, isn't it? But still, we'll see how we go. So uh, I'll speak to you soon, guys, cracking. Right, I've tucked myself in the corner of the field and I'm down nice and low because the hares obviously are, are quite small animals so I want to be either in line with them or, or reasonably close to their height. Um, if I had my sort of mat I'd probably be laying down but that's for another night. This was more of a recce than anything else. And um, I've been here for a while and I haven't spotted any more hair so I think that's probably it. The light, I've still got lots of light but it's starting to drop in uh, in this field because we've got this sort of um, sea wall type thing up here and that's just starting to block the sunlight out. So what I think I'm going to do 
it's called it a day for the hares, although on the way back I may well um, spot a couple because you see them along the sea wall as well, so fingers crossed. And I'm going to spend the rest of the evening um, may, uh, waiting for the barn owl because I know what field it's hunting over, and uh, fingers crossed. So um, I've already got, as I say, some barn owl shots and some hare shots, so it's not bad for uh, my first evening back out uh, into nature again. So. Um, I will catch up with you later guys, but it's been a, a fantastic start to being back out photographing wildlife. I'm loving every minute of it. A couple of geese just, a shovel of geese just flew past as well. So there's loads happening here, uh, but I didn't get those. Too busy talking to you guys. So I will, uh, yeah, catch up with you soon guys. So I had a really great evening's photography. Um, I didn't get to photograph any more barn owls, um, they just disappeared into um, another field and, and that was it. But um, as I was about to leave, when I was sort of crouched down low in the field, I, uh, another brown hare did, uh, did appear right in the distance. So I crept along and uh, I got some really good shots, I have got some shots of it running across the field, uh, just sitting in the field. Now the light had pretty much gone by then, so it's not the best light, but I'm still really pleased with those images. So for a first night back doing wildlife photography, I had a really, really good time and uh, it was so enjoyable. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, this video and I hope you've enjoyed the pictures because they will have, um, uh, some of the pictures anyway, will have come up uh, before this little piece of camera and then I've got a few more to put on after this. Um, yes, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly had a, a great night out. The next evening I went back and I didn't see anything. Um, well, in fact, I've got a, a few pictures of uh, a skylark singing on, on the ground, but they were quite distant and, um, yeah, not that great. So it just goes to show, you know, it all happened um, the day before and then I went back the next night I didn't see hardly a thing. And that's wildlife photography sort of to a T, really, to be honest. You just need that persistence and you just need to keep going. Uh, and the more you're out, the luckier you get, and that's, that's all there is to it. Um, if I was speaking a bit quickly on the, on the video, I hopefully it wasn't too quick, but I was really, really excited uh, to just be out and take photographs. So uh, yeah, hopefully you've been able to understand what I've been saying, and I wasn't sort of speaking super, super fast. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So um, if you have enjoyed this video and uh, you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that'd be fantastic. And if you do subscribe, press the little bell icon and you'll be notified when my next video is uh, uploaded. And if you can like and share, that'll be fantastic. So um, yeah, look after yourself guys and uh, I will speak to you on the next one.